Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Madras Arsenal. This is Kurt, and today we're going to be talking about the 1903 Springfield. So, you may be wondering why I'm dressed in this and shooting the 1903 Springfield. Well, the answer is if you look back at the pictures of the Philippine Insurrection, also known as the Philippine American War, um, you will see that the majority of the troops, U.S. soldiers, are wearing a Mills cartridge belt, either in blue or tan, khaki pants, brown leggings, and blue tops. Um, this was a holdover from the Spanish American War. Uh, because they, it did begin at the same time and the United States saw a need for an internal magazine bolt operated rifle much like the Spanish Mauser. So after the Spanish American War ended uh, the US had several thousand Spanish Mausers uh, that were captured and so they sent them over to Springfield so they make design out of this and uh, do some testing so they came up with the 1903 Springfield it's got a shorter barrel, uh, much like the Krag did, and it was very effective for fighting in the jungles that we were currently in. <coughs> it's got the same uh, safety as the Mauser, and this is actually one of the reasons that uh, the company was sued by Mauser Works. So let's get a, a close-up of the rifle and see what it can do. So, when these were first issued, um, I would imagine that given the logistics problems that the Army would have been facing, uh, they probably would have had these Mills cartridge belts at the very beginning, um, and then they were issued the standard cartridge belt, which was much like the 1912 cartridge belt, but it's a little bit more boxier. So, anyway, we're going to take a few shots with this. The 1903 has a, uh, a fairly decent recoil to it. It's, uh, in my opinion, I think it kicks a little bit more than your Mosin Nagant, even though people think that the Mosin Nagant has, has an awful kick. Uh, I do not think so myself. The sights on this. Uh, rifle, it's got a ladder sight, and I'll go into more detail here in a minute. But I actually quite like this sight. Um, I myself, I'm not a big fan of peep sights. Uh, this one does have a form of a peep sight in the bottom. Like I said, I'll go into more detail on that here in a minute. It's just a, an all around fun shooter. Uh, I really enjoy it. Alright, so let's go some, over some of the components here. Alright, so let's go over uh, a few things real quick. As I said, it's got the safe, or, I mean the same safe as the Mauser. Uh, to the left means it's ready to fire. Okay. Pull it back to the right, it's on safe. Not go anywhere, and you're not going to be able to operate the bolt. One curious thing, and I will 
get something here to show you. Is what's called the magazine cutoff. And essentially, what a bullet in. Flip this switch down. Drive it forward. You're not going to be able to. Uh, you can load it one by one. Okay. It prevents. It, it allows you to keep five rounds in your magazine at all times. Flip it off. And you can reload your magazine. As I said, the ladder sight also features an elevated ladder sight. Very nice. I, I really like this sight. You can also adjust your windage to your left or to your right. Okay. And then you've got your battle sight right here. Very, very great design. I really do enjoy this rifle quite a bit. And uh, on the front sight, you also have your front sight hood. Uh, to protect your front sight from dings or anything like that from bending your front sight post. Another thing that I like about all Springfield rifles is the fact that it's always had this front barrel band. If you go back to the Revolution, you'll still see this style barrel band on the muskets and rifles. It's very, very neat. In the back, in the butt plate, open up your little compartment and you'll have your oiling kit as well. As I said, you've got a five round internal magazine, which was a step up from the Spanish-American and Philippine uh, War, uh, Craig Yorkson. Um, in the Philippine insurrection, they were actually using Trador Springfields as well. <clears throat> Simple leather sling. Not a big fan of it myself, but I guess it works. And uh, here later, and a couple of other videos, we'll be going over the bayonet, bayonet drills, and uh, pretty excited to do that. That's the magazine cutoff switch. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. I wanted to give you a brief introduction into the 1903 Springfield, where it came from. I also forgot to mention about the bayonet. The original ones would have had a uh, spike bayonet, or a rod bayonet, actually, and it resembled about a foot long Phillips head screwdriver. Teddy Roosevelt was not very fond of it, and they quickly replaced it in 1905, coming out with the 1905 bayonet, which it continues to see service throughout the length of its life. Um, here in the next video about the 1903 Springfield, I'm going to be doing it in a World War I setting, and uh, I'll be going over several things such as uh, ranges, um, battles that it was in, as well as bayonets, bayonet drills, manual of arms. So I'm going to really dive deep into the 1903 Springfield and try to show you guys its history, um, what it was fought with, what the men were wearing with it, and things like that. So I think it's going to give a pretty interesting approach to it because I don't think anybody's ever done that before on YouTube. So it should be uh, pretty unique. So be sure to look forward to that. Right now I'm working on a bayonet dummy. dummy. So but anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned, and I will see you guys here shortly.